verse number 10. Amen. You know, we got, we got over 60 people here tonight, and the house looks empty after this morning. Amen. Amen. One of the things we got to strive toward is get everybody being faithful to the house of God. There's such encouragement, encouragement when all your brothers and sisters are here. Amen. How many of you remember when you left home for the first time and, and you had a brother or a sister that wasn't there for a holiday or wasn't there for a meal or somebody was missing? It never was the same. Then Paul, after that the governor had beckoned unto him to speak, answered, For as much as I know that thou hast been of many years a judge unto this nation, I do the more cheerfully answer for myself. You know, somebody need to get Paul on some. I'm not sure. I, I can't even make a good illustration. What's some of those pills you take that you're too jittery all the time? You need to be calmed down. There we go. Somebody needed to get Paul on some Prozac because it doesn't matter where he is, he's hyped. Paul's a little bit crazy. He's a little bit nuts. <laughs> Said, I do the more cheerfully answer for myself because that thou mayest understand that there are yet but 12 days since I went up to Jerusalem for to worship and they neither found me in the temple disputing with any man, neither raising up the people, neither in the synagogues nor in the city. Neither can they prove the things whereof they now accuse me. But this, everybody say, but this. But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. I want to preach to you for a few minutes tonight. And I'm, I do mean that. On this subject. Guilty as charged. Guilty as charged. Dear Lord God in heaven, I appreciate you so much. I thank you for your spirit that's here. I thank you for every soul that's here. I pray, God, that you will anoint me to deliver this powerful word, this beautiful word, this rich word, this another example of how we should strive to live before you. I pray that the people will receive it and that we'll see great fruit come forth because of your presence, of your power and your will. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And clap your hands unto the Lord one more time. Clap your hands unto the Lord, all ye people. Clap, clap your hands unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Paul is in prison. And unfortunately, it appears that a great deal of his, his life after he was filled with the Holy Ghost was spent in prison or in trouble of some sort. Paul... Paul, he, like I said earlier, the poor fellow just had it tough. Sometimes I'm afraid to pray for the effectiveness of Paul because I'm scared I may have to go through the trials of Paul to get it, and I don't know that I want it that bad. <laughs> He's in the middle of a two-year prison sentence in which he will be able to witness to Felix and Drusilla Festus, Herod Agrippa II, Bernice, and a varying number of high officials. Now, if you remember, this was prophesied to Ananias when the Lord told him, Paul is going to be coming to see you, or the one called Saul is going to be coming to see you. And the Lord said, go ahead and, be, and accept him because he is a chosen vessel before me. That he would preach the gospel before kings, Brother Rice. That's what's in the Bible. And it's just a fulfillment of biblical prophecy now that Paul stands before the procurator of Rome over the Jews. The Jews, this is kind of comical. I hope I can share it with you what's happening here. I hope you can, hope you can get it and that my words are good enough to, to share it with you. The Jews have hired somebody. They have hired a guy that's a great orator. 
that's, uh, that's good at beautiful words of, of flattery and being able to, to mold his words in such a way uh, to present their case against Paul to the Roman procurator Felix. Now, get this. He starts bragging on Felix. He starts telling all these, these great things Felix has done. And this address, it was so hypocritical. The Jews hated Felix. Felix's record was bad and the Jews hated him. He reveled in cruelty and lust uh, using the power of his throne to take away all kinds of money and all kinds of good from the Jews. They hated him. But yet this big dummy comes up and he says, By thee, O great Felix, do we enjoy great quietness. And very great things are done to our nation according to your wishes. We accept it always and in all places, most noble Felix, with all thankfulness. I can just see the Apostle Paul, Brother Pete, as he's standing there watching that 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 baloney come out of his mouth uh, as he's bragging on this guy that the Jews hated. He was mean to him, Brother Terry. He was cruel to him. He took away their stuff. He took away their property. He was a traitor. He was terrible. But when it came down to the man of God or a terrible ruler, they began to butter up the, the, the terrible ruler. And as I said, they're trying to butter him up. They're trying to flatter him in order to try to get him on their side to punish Paul as far as even having Paul executed. They took, they took Paul in, then they accused him. Here's what they said. They said, he is a pestilent fellow and a mover of all the Jews throughout the world. And as I read that, Brother Pete, it, it amazed me at what they were saying and they didn't even realize it. That this one man had impacted the Jews throughout the whole world. Why couldn't they ever wake up and listen to what he had to say instead of just shooting him down immediately? Why couldn't they wake up and experience what Paul had to say? That is the most frustrating thing about preaching the gospel. They said he's a ringleader. That, that, <laughs> that word by itself is funny. He's a ringleader of the sect of Nazarenes, which is a word that comes from those that follow Jesus Christ since he was from Nazareth. And they said he has gone about to profane the temple. So he's a pestilent little fella. Meaning he's a pest. Brother Robbie, meaning he aggravates everybody to death. He is a, a, he, he's a rabble rouser amongst the Jews. He's trying to get all the Jews uh, throughout the whole world uh, in an uproar and, and, and rebellion. He's a ringleader of a sect or a group called Nazarenes, which is what they're calling the Christians. And he's a profane person that is desecrating the temple. Then he says, we put him in prison. And we would have judged him according to our law. But the chief captain, this is nuts. They're just lying, Brother McKinney. They're just making up nutty lies, crazy lies, trying to, trying to, to get him by hook or by crook. But a chief captain of the Romans came and took him from us by violence. The truth of the matter is, if you read it over there in the Bible, Brother Peter, they had every intention of dragging him out and killing him. But the Roman soldiers showed up and stopped him and thought he was somebody else. The only reason they kept him in prison is they thought he was somebody else. This lynch mob had come together to try to shut Paul up. Can I tell you, you hear me right now, can I tell you that if you want too bad enough, uh, there's not enough devils in hell that can stop a Holy Ghost filled child of God. And then after this guy, Tertullian or whatever his name was, lying rascal, after he gets through, several Jews came and talked behind him and they witnessed against Paul saying that everything that guy just said were true. Then the governor, Felix, he just flicks his hand, beckons to Paul. And the Bible said he's only more than happy to answer for himself. He said, 12 days ago, I went up to Jerusalem to worship. Everybody say, to worship. He said, I wasn't in the temple at any time disputing with any man. 
I've never incited anybody to riot, neither in the synagogue or in the city. And what's more, they can't prove any of this stuff they're saying against me. It's all a pack of lies. They can't prove anything that they're saying about me. But then he said, but there's one thing about me that they won't have to prove. I will gladly stand before you and confess. This thing I confess unto you, according to what they call heresy, according to what they call false doctrine, according to what they call stupidity, according to something that they're so scared of that they'll make up a pack of lies to try to destroy it. So worship I the God of my fathers. I may not be guilty of all these lies they're telling on me, but there's one thing that I am guilty of is that my life is devoted to the worship of the Almighty God. My life is devoted to the, the, the recognition of the Almighty God. I preach the truth. I testify of His grace. I practice His wonderful works, and I follow His commandments. Guilty. You don't have to try me. You don't have to lie. You notice they didn't stand up and say that he's a great worshiper. They made up all kinds of lies. Brother Terry, I want to stand before the world. And they can call me a whole lot of things. They can call me a fanatic. They can call me legalistic. They can call me whatever they want to. But I want there to be not a doubt in their mind, not a doubt in his mind, and not a doubt in his mind that I am a worshiper of the true God, that my life is divine. Devoted to the worship of the king. I may not be very smart. I may not be very rich. I may not. I may be fat and bald headed. And according to my daughter, not near as good looking as I used to be. Oh, but let me tell you something. There ain't nothing that can stop me from being a worshiper. From being a worshiper. I'm guilty, guilty, guilty. Oh, when the authorities show up uh, looking for somebody to show in, throw in jail for being a worshiper, I want to be the first one to stand up and say, you got the man, you got the right man. I am a worshiper. You notice uh, that you don't have to use any humility. You don't have to use any humbleness. Uh, you don't have to dress it up. Uh, Paul just said, oh, uh, I didn't do that, uh, and I didn't do that. Uh, but I'm glad to say, I'm happy to say that I'm a worshiper. That I'm a worshiper. That I'm a worshiper. Anything... Hear me right now. Anything the devil brings against you will be a lie. He's a liar from the beginning and the father of all lies. And anything he brings against you will be a lie. True worship, hear me right now, true worship cannot be refuted, cannot be come against. True worship, Brother David, will always be in spirit and in truth. Paul's declaration is, I want you to understand something. We, we like to, to clap and lift in our hands and, and talk, saying hallelujahs and hosannas as worship. And I'll tell you, that's part of it. But Paul is not declaring with his actions that he's a worshiper. He's declaring with his life that he's a worshiper. My message is my worship. My life is my worship. But when I come into the house of God, when I come into the house of God, my worship becomes my testimony. My worship is my testimony of look what the Lord has done for me. Look what the Lord means to me. God forbid that we ever get to the formalistic uh, religion uh, of many churches that you go into. Uh, I want us to always have the free spirit of worship uh, within this sanctuary. The devil, the devil's a liar. True worship is always truth. I don't have to tell you that the Bible says let God be true and every man a liar. If you want to defeat the lies of the enemy, right. 
If you're sick and tired of being the devil's punching bag, worship. Worship the Lord. Worship the King. Worship the Deliverer. Worship the Healer. Worship Him. And the greatest way that you can worship Him, saints of God, is not with your clapping. It's not with lifting your hands. It's not with singing the songs of Zion. But it's with obeying His commandments. It's with obeying the Word of God. It is fulfilling the obligation of a... Oh, God, help me right now. It's fulfilling the obligation of a Holy Ghost-filled person. That's Christ in you, the hope of glory. These signs shall follow them that believe. The greatest worship is obeying His Word. Just a little part of it uh, is I will enter his gates with thanksgiving uh, and I will enter his courts with praise. Uh, That's the very base thing. Uh, God forbid that we ever stop worshiping him. True worship, Brother McKinney, is with my life. I'm sorry to, to come against those Facebook things, uh, but the greatest thing in the morning uh, when I, my feet hit the floor is not that the devil's afraid, uh, but that the Lord's got his ears open. My mission's not to destroy the devil. My mission is not to destroy the devil or to destroy hell. My mission is to lift up the name of Jesus. My mission is to worship the Lord. My mission is to let the light of the gospel shine through me. Let your light so shine before men that they'll see your good works. What's that mean? That means I can cause other people to become worshipers. I can cause other folks to become worshipers by allowing the light of God. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're in this room, there's one or two things. You either have the Holy Ghost or you don't. Those that have the Holy Ghost, better, my goodness, better, oh, Lord, before God Almighty, better always outshine those that don't. Say, well, I don't feel good. Let me tell you something. I was amongst 20-something people that don't feel good. There was a poor old black brother sitting over behind me. He came in late. Let me tell you something, Brother Terry. He was getting his praise on. Every time a song came, he ain't even in his right mind. He's afflicted. But he remembers way back there somewhere when they begin to sing about we shall see the king. He put his hands together, and he's just wobbling and shaking and moving all around. But let me tell you what it was in the eyes of God. It was beautiful. Beautiful. It was gorgeous. He said, Angels, come over here and look. There's a worshiper. Woo! Oh, if we could just shut our eyes and shut our ears off to those around us and just step over into the Holy of Holies and step over into the presence of the Lord and just let everything be pointed to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You may be seated. All Paul admitted to was being a worshiper. He said, I preach the resurrection, yes. But by preaching the resurrection, I'm worshiping. I preach salvation, but by preaching salvation, I'm a worshiper. They lied. They lied, Brother McKinney. They cheated and they lied. They made up a fake story that everybody in the room knew they were lying. And Paul showed up and he just said, I'm a worshiper. Yeah, I didn't do this and 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 I didn't do this. Oh, but I did worship. And when he got through with Felix, Brother David, the Bible said he was trembling. The Bible said he sat there trembling and shaking under the convicting power of the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you one reason why people aren't getting the Holy Ghost like they need to is because those of us that with the Holy Ghost ain't worshiping like we need to.
Because when we begin to worship him, let me tell you something. Understand this. Uh, uh, clapping and lifting your hands, running the aisles, jumping and shouting, that's all part of it. But true worship's having the right spirit. Because the Lord checked Samuel real fast. Uh, he said, people are prone to look on the outside, but I look at the heart. The Lord's interested in what's in the heart. And Felix trembled. He trembled. The Bible said under conviction. It's in there in the Bible. You can read it for yourself. He sat there beside his wife and trembled. And then he told Paul. He said, go away. And when I have a convenient season, I'll bring you back. They lied, they cheated, they wrongly accused, they used flattery and deceit. But when given the opportunity, oh, when given the opportunity, Brother Johnny, they beckoned to Paul. And when you beckon to a true worshiper, that's the worst thing you can do if you're a tool of the enemy. Brother Robbie, that's the worst thing you can do is open up the mouth. Of a true worshiper. Because they expected him to hang himself. But all he did was declare. Yep. I did it. What is more. I still do. And let me tell you one more thing. Ain't going to stop. I'm going to keep worshiping. I'm going to keep worshiping. I'm going to keep worshiping. When given the opportunity. True worship defeats all the tools of the enemy. True worship squashes out every lie that comes out of hell. And the Bible says, uh, 2 Timothy 2 and 19. I saw a picture. Put that up there. I don't want the last half of it, but, but you can't do that. Because it's great too. But I saw a picture in my mind a while ago. Right when I texted, uh, the Lord whooped this scripture on me, brother. When I texted you in the middle of service, I saw a picture. Of somebody that lost everything. That their house came completely falling down. All the things that they had, all the, the blessings they had was gone. They had nothing left in the eyes of the world. But brother Pete, I saw them dancing. I saw them dancing because there's just only so far you can go. They might have tore the house down, but the foundation standeth sure. And I could see them in my mind's eye telling the devil, there's one thing you can't take. As they danced across the foundation of God that standeth sure. I see uh, there, there may be a lot of things happen in this life, uh, a lot of things taken away from you, uh, but when you go, you can only go so low because the Bible said the foundation, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are Oh, yep, belly hurts, back hurts, head hurts, nose is running, bank account's broke, kids won't mind, might be getting a divorce, husband left me, wife left me, but the foundation of God. <laughs> There's one thing that the devil nor life can take away from me. And that's the foundation. Uh, and are built uh, upon the foundation of the apostles uh, and prophets. Uh, Jesus Christ himself uh, being the chief cornerstone. Uh, can I tell you, it's time to dance. Uh, it's time to worship. Uh, it's time to shout. Uh, it's time to get excited. Because the foundation of God standeth sure. Amen. 
Let us worship him in spirit. Let us worship him in truth. We worship his presence. We worship him for who he is. We worship him by speaking the truth of his word. I thought of something. There's no need, Brother Billy, there's no need for a story when you have the truth. There's no need for an excuse when you have the truth. You don't have to remember what to say if you're telling the truth. Because the end of the story is, the last chapter, you don't have to go there. The last chapter said, Felix, desiring to show favor to the Jews, left Paul in prison. Because, see, we're always looking for happy endings. He'll end up being in prison for over two years. He'll end up going through all kinds of trials and all kinds of deg degradation being in prison. Give me 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. Let's stand. I got to be honest with you tonight. I got to be honest with you. I was more than halfway hoping for a shout down tonight. Just one of those days, Brother Pete. I had a word, but it sure would have felt good to just watch everybody bust loose in the Holy Ghost. But he knows better than me. Aren't you glad he knows better than you? Paul, Brother Billy Paul, after all of that, he testified so strongly to that man that he sat up there on his throne shaking under conviction. And they left him in jail. For which cause? <laughs> For which cause? Brother David, the cause of Jesus Christ. What is the cause of Jesus Christ? Save people from their sins. The cause for which cause we faint not. For which cause we faint not. But though... Somebody hear me right now. But though our outward man perish. Back ache, belly ache, toe ache, head ache, nose broke, ear infection, infected hairs, bunions, gout. Arthritis, bursitis. We got all that stuff. Brother David, it's a fact. It is a fact. I'm 40 years old. And I know some of you are going to say, that ain't nothing. You ain't feeling what I'm feeling in the mornings. When I get out of bed and I walk to the bathroom on the sides of my feet because my ankles and feet are just killing me. Because I can't straighten up for a while because my back. Part of it's because I'm too fat. Part of it's because I've abused myself. And, and Brother Johnny tried to tell me I'd pick up water heaters and I'd pick up washers and dryers and air conditioners doing all kinds of stupid stuff and I pay for it every morning. It's just life. Everybody under the sound of my voice, you know, except maybe Brother Rice and Sister Virginia. I don't want to work as hard as Brother Rice when I'm 120 like he is. He can work me in the ground. But everybody under the, hear me right now, everybody under the sound of my voice, your body is going to fail you. The Henson sang a song about it, and I've read about it ever since. You actually start dying the day you're born. Your body is only temporary. You're going to have problems. Uh, you're going to have failures. Uh, you're going to have sick days. Uh, you're going to have days that don't feel good. You're going to get depressed. You're going to get discouraged. It just happens. 
And it don't mean you're a sinner. And it don't mean you're no good. And it don't mean God ain't pleased with you. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man. Arthur don't hurt the inward man. Cancer don't hurt the inward man. Diabetes don't hurt the inward man. Rejection don't hurt the inward man. Making fun and mocking don't hurt the inward man. Yet the inward man, Brother Pete, is renewed. Today might have been a tough. Today, today might have been tough. But when I roll out of bed in the morning, this is the day that the Lord hath made. <laughs> There's a reason why Jeremiah said they're new. Every morning, every morning, the inward man, let me tell you something, since I got a prayer life like I'm supposed to have, Brother Billy, it don't matter what's going on, but if I can get to the house of God, Brother Rice, everything's going to be all right. If I can get into my prayer closet, if I can get, the, oh, if I can get my prayer robe on and my bandana and my Bible under my arm every morning, every morning. It don't matter how I start out, Brother Pete, but somehow I end up worshiping, I end up praising, and I end up feeling the Holy Ghost. I end up feeling the power of God, and there's nothing going to face me that day that him and I can't make it through. It's a new day. It's a new day. It's a new day. For our light affliction. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not, everybody say we look not at things which are seen but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. I praise Him for what He's done for me. I worship Him for where He's taken me. I worship Him for what He has in store for me. The things that I see are temporal, but the things that I don't see are eternal. And here's the difference between a true worshiper and somebody going through the motions. A true worshiper is looking across the next hill. A true worshiper uh, is looking uh, into the far future uh, and knowing uh, that what I'm going through right now, uh, it ain't going to last very long. Uh, what I'm going through right now uh, is only temporary. Uh, the what I'm going through right now uh, is only making me a better person. Because uh, in that great getting up morning, uh, oh, when the trump of God shall sound, uh, whether I'm in the grave uh, or whether I'm walking the earth. Uh, so you know why I worship the Lord? You know why I worship the Lord? Because my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. You know why I worship the Lord? It's because I've been filled with His Spirit. You know why I worship the Lord? That if the trumpet sounds, I'm gone.